Now this part looks like an absolute nightmare to machine, to program, to even design. But there's no problems with that because I'm here with Ben from SolidCam who's done all of it. So first, how did you come up with the idea to do a leaf? Uh, well, that was part of the uh, collaboration with Mazak. So Mazak tasked us with their eco and green uh, strategy they're doing. Uh, but a part of their new logo is a leaf. Uh, so they asked us to design some kind of uh, trophy or, or uh, element that we could show off the, the, their eco um, sort of friendly machine and everything now. So yeah, come up with the, the leaf, uh, bent it out of shape in solid cam and then uh, machined it. So what was this like to actually design? Because obviously you've just you said you bent it in solid cam, but you've got to draw this first. Yeah, so I mean, we're using the power of SolidWorks, so SolidCam plugs into SolidWorks, so uh, drew, drew the component flat, first of all, got the correct shape of the leaf, and then uh, using the surface modeling, we just, uh, I just bent it out of shape, flexed it just to make it look organic, uh, and then, yeah, we, we went from there. I love how you talk about it, because it just sounds like a two minute job, it sounds so simple. Yeah, yeah, at the time it was a bit of head scratching, but um, yeah, it came together quite nicely design wise. Now, obviously, to program this, there's quite a few problems you've got to overcome, mainly because of the shape and also how thin it is. So, what sort of machining strategy did you use to get this? And I think for the people at home, the one in the machine has actually been machined today while we've been here. So there's no polishing, no nothing, and the finish is just incredible. Yeah, no tricks, no tricks at all. The one that's there has been machined in front of everybody. Uh, but yeah, the, the part's quite, quite thin. Uh, so the strategies we've used, first of all, use eye machining on the front of it. So keeping the weight in the back, so keep the thickness of material in the back of this here. So machine all the front off first using eye machining, which is our high speed roughing strategy. Um, then we finished all the front, did all the edge breaking first as well. So we're using five axis automatic edge breaking. Edge break it all before we actually cut the shape uh, while it's got the strength. And then when we turn over, I've done the back in four slices. So we rough a slice, finish a slice, then rough another slice, finish that slice, just to keep that strength in it. So it's all about strategy. It's all about having that flexibility in the software to do that as well. But what I love from what you were just saying then is, you actually broke all the edges before you even machined it because who likes filing? Let's be honest. Who likes filing, yeah. <laughs> and to try and break the edge once it's two millimeters thick, you know, you're gonna have a lot of ring in that and that's gonna bounce, it's gonna flex. So do the edge breaking first. That's not something that people often think about, but. Uh, it's a good strategy to use, you know, you break the edge off with a, with a ball nose first of all. It looks a bit strange on the machine because all you're doing is digging into material. Uh, but it cuts nice and then once you cut the pocket out and the shapes out, uh, the edge breaks already there for you. And I think exactly what you just said then, people think it looks strange because you're just plowing into material. But then by the end of it, it completely makes sense. Yeah, but definitely. Yeah. There's something on the back I really want to point out is, obviously on the front, the pattern's just just sort of indented a little just bit. Just engraved on the front, But on yeah. the back, that's actually protruding out. Yeah, that so, was a part of the design as well. So uh, well, I was going to engrave the back. It's actually the, a mirror of the front. So the, the front's engraved with the same shape. But on the back, I actually put those in and raised them up as a bit of a strengthener as well as part of the design of the part. I like how you said a, I like how you said a strengthener. <laughs> to me, that just looks like more of a nightmare to program. Yeah, it does. But, it does. But using the uh, using the strategies in solid cam. So again, that's five axes simultaneous on the back, just lacing across the part. So ball nose on the back, uh, going up and down over all those little undulations. Uh, it's, it's basically quite easy. And then you know, you just tell it to uh, to tilt away when when it's getting near the spindle. You see on some of the footage from today, the part gets quite close to spindle spinning round, but. Again, it's all the power of simulation in solid cam, you know, you can see that before you get to machine, before you have any, any issues. Uh, and the idea on the back as well, doing the ball nose on the back, the front's actually done with the barrel cutting. So the front of the component, it's got the same finish as the back, but the front of the co component took about a fifth of the time to machine uh, with the barrel cutters. So again, showing off the power of new strategies. So, you know, solid cam's quite capable of using all these new strategies, new tools from, from tooling companies and uh, uh, yeah showing that off really yeah like you said it's, it's all about learning them new strategies and taking them new strategies it's, it's going to help you yeah that's what we've got we've got to be you know we've got to be there we've got to lead the lead the way you know all these tooling companies are bringing out new tools new shapes of tools new designs you know solid cam needs to be able to use them and, and we can we've got a, a quite a powerful toolkit inside solid cam we can create any shape tool uh, and we can use those tools quite easily and quite freely as well